Six years later, we cannot forget those moments of resilience in the face of unspeakable tragedy. Play It Forward is, is, comes from Pay It Forward. When it all happened, uh, we, we, you just get in such a depression and grief, and um, you didn't know what to do. And it just felt so much better to um, take care of other people. One of the messages of the One October Sunrise Ceremony where you will be at on Sunday is Vegas Strong. What does that mean to you? Sticking together, unity. That's the best way to describe it. The hour I first News 3 starts now. Las Vegas remembers 1 October. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Marie Mortera. It was a Sunday night six years ago that our city forever changed. The deadliest mass shooting in modern history unfolding at the festival grounds outside Mandalay Bay at the Route 91 concert. 58 lives lost that night, two more victims dying from their injuries by 2020. Those victims remembered at a powerful gathering in downtown Las Vegas this morning. The annual ritual honors lives lost, the bravery of first responders, and to show support for survivors still coping with physical and emotional injuries. This the beginning of a day of tributes to collectively heal. Now six years since 1 October, I continue to be deeply touched and moved by the response of our community. LVMPD and the strength of our friends and family. Today, in continuing our commitment to the Vegas Strong, we pause to honor the souls we lost. Six years later, we cannot forget those moments of resilience in the face of unspeakable tragedy. I want you to remember how we looked out for each other, how we helped each other. We lifted each other up through the darkest of times. That is what remains with me to this day, the love of our community. But it's important for us to remember that we can never forget what happened because of the incredible lessons that we learned that changed the community forever. We came together, as has been mentioned, as a single community. We brought light to places that were dark, comfort where there was affliction. We rose above the awful circumstances, and this community demonstrated that it is unique, one of a kind. Although we are here at the sixth year anniversary, I can, I can tell you that the pain is just as strong today as it was back then. And we know that we will never get over this. However, we will get through it together. That's Steve Gomez remembering his daughter Angela, one of the lives lost that night. Commissioner Gibson also spoke about the Forever One Memorial, a permanent tribute to be built on a two-acre piece of land near Reno and Giles. The director of the design previously described the memorial as a place to provide solace and healing, while also serving as a reminder to promote peace, unity, and the prevention of violence. Blood donations saved lives that night and in remembrance and to underscore the life-saving donation, the Vegas Golden Knights and Vine Talent hosted a blood drive today. News 3's Ambar Rodriguez was there. At first I thought maybe she had just fallen, but when I started, you know, I got on top of her again and started touching her. And I touched her head and I had a bunch of blood on my hand and I realized what had happened. The moment Giovanna Calcedia's husband, Frank Calcedia's, saw his wife's blood on his hands, he knew it was a race against time. He says after dodging what felt like an endless amount of bullets, he was able to safely get her into a police car. She was the first one to get to the hospital out of everybody. So I'm very proud of that because the, the doctors say like, the people die from gunshot wounds to the head, but most of them, right, not only the trauma, but most of them is uh, uh, blood loss. Once at UMC, Giovanna received two blood transfusions, which ultimately saved her life. Now, the married couple is shining their light on the importance of sustaining the local blood supply. Pre-injury, I, I, I didn't think about it, and 
I never you know, thought about yeah, it. You yeah. Know, you don't think about those things. Like you just think that you know you're gonna show up to the hospital, hospital. and they're they're gonna have everything ready for you, but you don't see the scene, the back scene, back. the people that put their time and effort into mm-hmm. it and come and you know and come Vol- and volunteer. Donate. Yeah, donate their time and give blood. On Sunday, more than 200 people signed up to donate the vital fluid. One of them was Golden Knights reporter and radio color commentator, Gary Lawless. It's great reason to give blood all the time. Today especially, it's October 1, where we, uh, you know, we look back to uh, what happened in 2017 and, uh, and honor the people that, uh, well, honor everyone involved in that day. Obviously, the people that, that died, the people that were wounded, our first responders, and all the people of Las Vegas. Reporting in Las Vegas, Ambar Rodriguez, News 3. An artist whose work is part of the One October Tribute at the Clark County Headquarters shares what it was like to pay tribute in this heartfelt way. I wanted them to have something they can look at at the memorial and think, wow, that someone remembers our loved ones. And the image that we can show you here, it's of the faces of the victims. Correct. And at the same time, people coming together to help. Why was that important to you? Uh, I didn't want to just honor just one part mm-hmm. of that tragedy. I want to honor all of those that were also working. One of the messages of the 1 October sunrise ceremony where you will be at on Sunday is Vegas strong. What does that mean to you? Sticking together, unity. That's the best way to describe it. One of the people who lost their lives was 20-year-old Quentin Robbins. Through their grief, his family is now helping others in our community. East Race and East Rosh has more on Play It Forward. Hi guys, welcome in. How are we doing today? It's the little things that can make the most difference. Can I have your name please? A few dollars here and there, easily forgotten once given. But here at the Chicken Shack on Boulder Highway, the little things are adding up to something big. Are we down in and taking out today? 20% of Friday's sales going to the Quinton Robbins Play It Forward Foundation. So Play It Forward is, is comes from pay it forward. When it all happened, uh, we, we you just get in such a depression and grief and um, you didn't know what to do. And it just felt so much better to um, take care of other people. There has been a shooting with uh, multiple victims just outside Mandalay Bay. There was a concert taking place. Six years ago, Joe Robbins lost his eldest son, Quentin, on 1 October. The 20-year-old shot and killed at the Route 91 Harvest Festival across from Mandalay Bay, one of the youngest victims of a tragedy that would ultimately take 60 lives. A young man full of promise. We committed early on. If somebody wants to ask about my son, I want to talk about him because if you don't, you know, if you don't, gosh, they truly do die. Now the family's Play It Forward Foundation raises money for youth sports, even providing scholarships, giving back in a way they know Quentin would be proud of. Especially individuals that can't afford, you know, to maybe sign up for that team, because some of these fees are, you know, quite extensive, maybe two, three hundred dollars in some cases, and they just can't, they want to play. But it's it's tight. After Quentin's death, the city of Henderson dedicated Q's court right here at Heritage Park, an area where he grew up. But while some tributes are meant to last forever, there is one reminder of Q that's about to be retired. Whenever I'm playing, I just always think about him. That's Quentin's younger brother, Quade, wearing number three for the Basic High School Wolf Pack, the same number his big brother wore at Basic. Once Quade graduates in the spring, number three is going in the rafters, never to be worn again. I'm just honored to wear it. Like whenever anybody sees it, they know it's because of my brother. and. It's just a cool number, too. Henderson also dedicated a street for Quinton, and east of town, he's represented on a hillside. B for basic, Q for Quinton. Back at Chicken Shack, owner David Percy says the fundraiser is personal. He was uh, charismatic, he was fun-loving, he was outgoing, and he was just uh, a person that put everyone first. He'd known Quinton since they were both seven years old. Now it's his name tattooed on Percy's arm. Sports is something that we both bonded over and we love. Events like this will have somebody that we, we don't even know are our friends yet. They'll be our friends. And since 2018, the foundation has raised well over $100,000.
the little things adding up, spreading kindness, just like Quentin, they say, would have wanted. Denise Rosh, News 3. And if you'd like to donate to the foundation, we have a link for you on news3lv.com. In a few hours, the city of Las Vegas remembers the lives lost from one October with a candlelight ceremony and a ringing of bells, one for every victim. The tribute will be held at 10.05 p.m. at the Las Vegas Community Healing Garden. News 3's Kalia Patterson joins us now with an early look at the solemn ceremony. Yes, we are here right now at the Community Healing Garden with just a couple of hours. Our Las Vegas Mayor Carolyn Goodman will be reading the names of the 58 people who lost their lives at the Route 91 Harvest Festival and it just starts in a couple of hours. Right now there aren't a lot of people here, but we have seen some people come in, some of the community members come in and out of here just paying their respects, but I wanted to give you a look of what's happening now. We do see these trees here, 58 trees were planted at this community garden years ago to pay tribute to the 58 people who lost their lives and this is my first time here um, just moving here to Las Vegas and I have to tell you looking at each memorial they are personalized to each person who lost their lives um, just so six years ago and it really does tug at your heart it tells you the sense of who they were almost they're personalized um, decorated for who they were you see that these people were teachers they were parents they were children you really know um, what you kind of feel like you know who they were and it really just tugs at your heart here um, it, it's just a very emotional scene when you see community members trying to hold on to one another. This person here, they were from Canada. They're all from all around the world and people just coming to pay their respects. This will start at 10.05 later this evening with the mayor and other community members and community officials so they can start that candlelight vigil in bells to pay their respects and tribute to those who lost their lives. We are live at the Community Healing Garden. Kalia Patterson, News 3. Kalia, thank you. We will check back in with you then. Many from Las Vegas and beyond are sharing their thoughts on this somber day, remembering where they were, the pain of loss, and the resilience that we still see today, six years later. The words one October, never forget, and Vegas strong, top of mind and top of heart.